Ciao! Welcome to a new class. I'm Giulia and today we talk about the best tripods for food photography. Are you ready? Let's dive in. So, a tripod is a food photographer's best friend. If you invest in a good tripod, you won't regret it. You will have it for years and it will make your life so much easier. I've had my tripod for about seven years. I invested a bit of money in it uh, seven years ago. I still have it. It's still running strong and sturdy and I absolutely love it and I never looked back. <laughs> So if you could use a tripod, that'd be great. A sturdy tripod is a must have for every food photographer. It ensures that your photos are sharp and it gives you the possibility to fine tune your composition. And we know how important that is when we do styling, you wanna be able to move things around easily without you know, having to worry about Oh no, I composed it, my image differently. No, you want to have your camera set on a tripod so that you can look at your styling and then just move things a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Oh, that fork doesn't work, I'll remove it. Oh, that napkin, it's too bright, I'll put this one in. You want to be able to fine tune your styling and the only way you can do that is if your camera is on a sturdy tripod and your composition is not moving. So why a tripod? Not only you can set your scene exactly like you want and fine tune your styling and composition, but also you might work in more difficult lighting conditions when there is not as much light and you won't risk getting camera shake at all. Your photos will be sharp 99.9% .9 of the time if you use a tripod because you can slow down your shutter speed and you can have uh, more light and better image quality because you can keep your ISO low and reduce, slow down your shutter speed. We have classes on ISO shutter speed, the manual mode and the exposure triangle. All of that is covered in other classes. So go check those out and you will know exactly what I mean uh, when I say that you would get better image quality because you can slow down your shutter speed. But mainly it's you will not get camera shake and you can keep the image quality as good as possible. You can arrange your scene, as we mentioned, like you can play around with the styling a lot more easily. You can fine tune your light because if your composition doesn't move and your subject doesn't move, what you will notice is that, oh, maybe I actually need a little bit more light in there. So there you go, I'll put a reflector there. Or maybe like, oh, my highlights are too sharp here. They're too punchy, so I'm gonna need a diffuser. So you can fine tune your light as well because you can notice how it hits your subject and you can do something about it. We have classes also on how to uh, you know, manipulate light. So go check those out as well. Also, if your camera is on a tripod, your hands are free, <laughs> meaning you can uh, use your hands for the styling. You can use your hands in your scene if you want to take photos with like self timer and you want your hands to be in the frame, you can do that. Your hands are free to do everything else that's needed in food photography. <laughs> Also, with a tripod, you can do some fun, <laughs> advanced, creative things. So uh, having a tripod will allow you to do uh, advanced creative, it's got advanced creative applications. So we'll look at those um, in just a little bit. Now, how do you choose the right tripod? What are the important features that a tripod must have for food photography? It needs to be sturdy and it needs to be stable. Those are the two main things that a tripod needs, sturdiness and stability. Another very important thing is that its, um, its height is adjustable because you don't know if you're gonna shoot on the floor, you don't know if you're gonna shoot on the table, you might wanna shoot overhead, you might wanna shoot a low angle. So you need to be able to adjust the height of the tripod. A really cool thing that some tripods have, and I highly recommend you invest a little bit more, um, even as a beginner, 
to get yourself a tripod that has a tilting central tilting central column so you can take overhead shots. Overhead shots are very popular, they're very important in food photography, and having a tripod that allows you to shoot those is a bonus. You will not regret it. They cost a little more, but then again, wait for Christmas, wait for your birthday, you know, save up a little bit more money, but get yourself like invest in your tripod is one of the best investments that you can do as a food photographer. Then invest in a tripod that has a maximum load of at least five to seven kilograms. If you get to 10 is even better because some lenses are heavy, but um, at least, at least five, five to 10, let's put it that way. Um, because obviously your camera is gonna need to support your camera, your lens, and often the head, which we'll look at in a second. So your tripod head, your camera, your lens, often maybe like a trigger for your flash or sandbags to make it even more sturdy. So some kind of like uh, anchoring thing, like a heavy thing to make it more sturdy. So it needs to be able to support some, some weight. <laughs> and it's important that it has rubber feet because unless you're shooting on carpet, which is maybe not ideal considering you're gonna have messy crumbs and drizzles and stuff. So shooting food on a carpet is not really recommended. So if you're shooting on like um, a ceramic tiles or anything like that, um, it's important that you have rubber feet, so your legs, the legs of your tripod won't move. And again, you increase sturdiness and stability by having a rubber feet. Now, let's talk about the components of a tripod. The best tripods will be a like a combination of legs and head. Okay, that's how you recognize a better tripod from a beginner tripod or like a less, um, like a crappy tripod. <laughs> so those Chinese tripods that come in one piece, uh, they're generally lower quality than tripod that come in two pieces. So again, I recommend you invest a little more into a, a, a better, better tripod. And tripod that come in two pieces, one piece is the legs and one piece is the head. Now let's look at some of the legs options here. So there are legs that have two sections and legs that have three sections. Some tripods are made with aluminum and some tripods are made with carbon fiber. Now, the main difference is that uh, two sections, maybe the tripod is um, shorter. So you can't uh, go as high as you could with a tripod with three sections. So when you buy your tripod, check for the maximum height that the tripod will allow you. And the main difference between um, aluminum and carbon fiber is the weight. So aluminum legs will be a lot heavier than carbon fiber legs. Now, this also comes at a cost. So aluminum legs will be mm, cheaper than carbon fiber legs. As food photographers, we don't really care much about the weight of the tripod. We care uh, more about the stability of it. So personally, for my food photography tripods, I choose aluminum because it's cheaper, it's heavier, and that's actually a good thing because it means it, it's more, it's sturdier and it's more stable. Carbon fiber, I have a carbon fiber tripod that I use for my travel really like when I go on location, like on restaurants or food and when I shoot food and travel. Uh, Cause obviously at that point I care about how much weight I'm carrying on my back. But if I'm shooting in studio, then I'd rather go for aluminum. Again, it's cheaper, so it's a good choice for beginners. Another thing to uh, look out for in your tripod legs is the central column. Now we have two types of central column. Well, actually three types of central column. Uh, the horizontal column, which is the one that I actually recommend. And as you can see in the image, it can be tilted so that it, it becomes horizontal, meaning your camera comes here and you can shoot overhead. It's brilliant for food photography. Again, these tripods cost a little bit more, 
but they're so, so worth it. Um, so try and find a tripod with a horizontal column like this one. Sometimes in studios, uh, in, for bigger jobs and stuff, we use a geared column, which is basically a column with a little nye, nye, nye thing that allows you to fine tune how high the central column will go basically. And sometimes that's important when you wanna fine tune your composition and again, the height of your tripod. Um, but otherwise, the horizontal column is what you should look for in your, in your tripod. Now the head, so on top of your tripod legs, there is a universal screw and all of these heads can be screwed on to your, should be screwed on to your legs. In food photography, having control over your scene and composition is very important. So personally, I recommend you get a three-way head. That is better, the three-way head is cheaper, lighter, and is generally better for beginners. Personally, I have a geared head. These are very heavy and very expensive, but they give you a lot more control. So again, it depends on what level uh, you are in your photography, whether you want to go for a three-way or a geared head. Um, the main difference is in the ability to fine tune your, your camera movements. With a three-way head, you unscrew one of these three um, knobs and then you can move the camera either horizontally like this, tilt it, or you can move it between horizontal and vertical, or you can rotate it like this. So all of the three movements on the three axes will allow you to place your camera exactly the way you want it for your composition. The geared head does the same thing, except the adjustments are, can be a lot slower. So if you turn the knob, the camera moves very, very slowly, meaning if you want to move it one millimeter to the right, you just turn the knob a little bit and the camera and the, the camera will just move one millimeter to the right. So you have full control and you have a much better control. Um, and obviously these come with all sorts of like extra fancy, <laughs> fancy stuff like the bubble here that tells you exactly when the camera is uh, like flat to 45 degree. And it's got a, because it's a geared head, it can tell you exactly what degree uh, your camera angle is. So if you want an exact 45 degree angle, this head will be able to tell you that you are at it exactly 45 degrees. Now, this head is heavy. And that's why it's important that your tripod has a maximum load capacity of seven, 10 kilos, because if you put a head like this on the tripod, you're already adding a couple of kilos to it, plus your camera, plus your sandbag and everything else. So um, now you understand why it's important to have a maximum load capacity a little higher. The three-way head, great for beginners, also has a little bubble and it's a lot lighter and maybe a little easier to use as well. So I recommend starting with one of these ones. I also recommend avoiding, avoid, avoid, avoid the ball head. A lot of beginner tripods will come with the ball head um, or the cheaper tripods generally have a ball head. I do not recommend the ball head just because it's tricky to use and you can't fine tune your movements. So basically it's got a screw. The moment you unscrew it, the head will just go everywhere. So like it will just move randomly and it's a lot more difficult for you to just hold your camera and be able to fine tune those movements. Um, because obviously based on the weight of your camera, it might move while you shoot, the ball might just like unscrew itself a little bit. So it's not a very stable, sturdy solution. And trust me, you're going to get very frustrated because it's like, oh my God, I want, I just want to put it straight. And then you shoot 10 pictures and then the 11th picture, the camera will be, oh, screw. Because the head, you know, the ball head has got 
lose and you have to readjust it and that will you know mess up your whole composition and everything so it costs less yes but you will pay for it in frustration trust me <laughs> so again i recommend investing a little bit more money get yourself a three-way head but you gain in mental health and peace of mind <laughs> and better photos which is very important um so all of these more professional not professional but like all of these better quality heads come with a quick release plate another one of those wonderful things that uh, cost a little more but then again will save you a lot of time and a lot of frustration basically what I, uh, the way this work is that you screw this little guy underneath your camera there's a um, uh, there's a screw underneath your camera you screw one of these on your camera so this plate stays on your camera and then basically you lock it and unlock it on the head some heads that don't have the quick release plate you basically need to literally screw the camera on the tripod every time now that's not super convenient because if you want to you know once you're done with your composition you're happy with your image if you want to shoot freehand or if you want to just take your camera off the tripod for whatever reason um in that way is a lot more complicated to do than with the quick release plate with the quick release plate it's like uh, there is a little lever thing you do clock and the camera comes off and then you put a black clock and it comes back and it goes back on super easy so i recommend check a tripod head with a quick release plate now what are the creative applications of shooting with a tripod so you can do all sorts of fun things here you can do focus stacking compositing action shots you can use your hands in shots you can do gifs and you can do stop motions like in this little guy let's see if it loads yes there we go I did this little stop motion thing with the pasta going around. It's super cute. And I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't have a tripod. Why? Because obviously when you do stuff like stop motion, everything needs to be in the same exact spot. Your composition needs to be that. You only need to move things at a time that obviously eventually will look like they're gonna move focus stacking again you need to shoot a series of pictures that are exactly the same except for the focus compositing another technique where everything in your composition need to be needs to be exactly still uh, because you are going to need to um basically layer multiple images on top of each other in photoshop action shots hands in shots gifs so these are like very creative applications and actually we have classes i have a class on focus stacking i have a class on compositing i have a couple of we have a club, couple of classes on action shots and uh, how to use hands and stuff so go check those classes out if you want to learn more about these uh, creative techniques uh, these are a little bit more advanced but they're so much fun and they will really elevate your photography so have a look at those other classes so that's all for today thanks for watching and make sure to tune in next time ciao